Okay, thank you very much. Um, we're gonna be, we, we did a lot of this, but we didn't do all of this. And as we go through the semester, we'll be sort of like filling in the, um, the structure of this classification scheme of Jewish humor. Um, and it, it's my idiosyncratic uh, idea, my, my scheme. Um, it works for me. And uh, I, I haven't had any, I've had a lot, done a lot of articles on it. I haven't had any pushback. So I guess it's benign, um, but please feel free, uh, you know, to um, yeah, uh, challenge. In this class, as you know, I want to say it again, it's always okay to challenge, to challenge your fellow student, to challenge me, uh, as long as we all do it with respect and uh, respectful discussion. And I, I, I definitely have no problem with that. Okay. We, we did a little bit of this, we, the idea, what makes a joke Jewish, that's really what we're talking about here. What makes a joke Jewish? For the most part, we would like to concentrate on aspects of Jewish humor that are uh, purely uniquely Jewish. We don't always succeed, uh, but certainly a lot of things make a joke Jewish, even if it could also be used in other groups. Um, Joseph Telushkin, who uh, wrote a lot of, uh, wrote a book on Jewish humor, um, his idea, and it's a very good one, is that Jewish humor has to express a Jewish sensibility. Whatever else it does, it has to be Jewish. Uh, and that's why I remember in class, I said I, those, those uh, series of, of uh, videos and, and books of old Jews telling jokes, I don't really care for them. Yeah, they're funny, but they're not that Jewish. They're only Jewish in the sense that a lot of older Jews uh, like to talk about sex and marriage, but everybody wants to talk about sex and marriage. That makes for a lot of good humor. Um, so a, a Jewish sensibility, uh, sometimes we can uh, figure out how to have that and why it has it. Sometimes we just have to say, well, I know it when I see it, uh, like a lot of art. And of course it has to be funny. So we need two things. We need it to be funny and we need it to be Jewish for Jewish humor. Um, here's uh, basically the overall structure of what I'm working with. Um, we've looked a lot at self-deprecation, something that I don't have a resolution to, but it suddenly made me, I was interested in it this semester is looking at the difference between self-deprecating humor and deprecating humor, which we kind of saw in the Modi Rosenfeld clip that ended with the Home Depot, uh, but he had a lot of deprecating humor in it um, and self-deprecating, and maybe that's how he got away with it. So I categorize that under the attitude of the humor. A lot of Jewish humor is sarcastic, not to say that others are not, okay? But a lot of Jewish humor is sarcastic. There's a, you know, a lot of use of irony. And of course, self-deprecation is very, very Jewish. Um, what kind of, what do I mean by devices? Is things that we could use, you know, to make up humor, to make humor, to create it. You might use wordplay. Um, questions, uh, rhetorical questions. Uh, answering a question with a question, which is typ typically Jewish. Um, arguing, we talked about how Jews feel, we feel that we, we argue a lot. And that even goes back um, to the Hebrew Bible with the uh, Israelites arguing with Moses and with God all the time, and even with Abraham arguing with God. And I think I mentioned that one in class, but we'll, we'll probably go over it again uh, in a few weeks. And blaming and complaining also. You also see that in the Hebrew Bible with the Israelites um, being saved from slavery in Egypt. And then what's the very first thing they do? They complain, they blame, they argue. Uh, so if anybody wants to, to know whether 
Uh, they really were the precursors to Jews. Yeah, for me, that says it all. Um, yeah, and, and like I said, it's okay to challenge. Stop me anytime if you want to contribute or if you want to challenge, either way. Um, and if you want examples, I'll try. Yeah, definitely, you know, stop me if you say, I don't understand that. Can you give me an example? Talmudic logic is very, very involved logic. And um, it's so identified with the Talmud, the, the, ant, uh, the um, ancient um, book that, that uh, the ancient rabbis and other sages uh, put a lot of their learning into, um, that when you have a joke uh, that uses very involved logic and logical arguments, um, it has a very Jewish ring or even a Talmudic ring. And of course, if you're re referring to scripture, certainly if you're referring to the Hebrew Bible, not the New Testament, if you're referring to scripture, uh, very, very Jewish. Um, and I, we haven't looked at this yet in class, but uh, Yiddish curses, uh, which are Jewish just by virtue of the fact that number one, they're in Yiddish, and number two, they're unique. A Yiddish curse is the kind of thing that starts out sounding like a blessing. And then the other shoe drops. Uh, so um, we'll, I hope we'll talk about that. All of these are, are worth worthy topics to talk about. Speaking of topics, sometimes the topic makes it Jewish. We looked at some Holocaust humor. Um, I think we, we looked at a little bit of assimilation humor and circumcision humor. Uh, some people, we, we mentioned some of it. Certainly, if you have circumcision in your joke, it's Jewish. I guess it could be Muslim, but it would be a, an, older, an older boy being circumcised. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm trying to think if, if I've seen Muslim humor involving circumcision. I haven't, but maybe there is. You might want to let me know if you know if you see anything. And then of course, overcoming oppression. It doesn't have to be Jewish. However, uh, the Jews have such a long history of being oppressed that just the humor itself is a way of overcoming oppression. And so of course, jokes about overcoming oppression are somehow very, very Jewish. Uh, then finally, the characters. Um, you can have uh, rabbis, certainly if you have rabbis in a joke, it's going to be Jewish. Uh, you can have a God in a joke. God features in a lot of Jewish humor. It also features in a lot of Christian humor. In fact, sometimes there's, it goes back and forth where I'll, I'll see a site that has um, supposedly a Jewish joke, and I've, I've already seen it before on a Christian site and vice versa. Um, there's a whole uh, uh, bunch of, of tales of the wise men of Helm, and it's um, satirical or sarcastic because basically they're as far away from wise as you can possibly get. Um, matchmakers, if you've, ever, if you've ever seen Fiddler on the Roof, matchmakers, uh, and there's a lot of humor about, and... Um, much of it is Jewish. I probably should look at Indian matchmaker humor. Um, it might be similar, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of Jewish matchmaker humor. Um, and a lot of it is related to Jewish mother humor. Um, what's what's Jewish mother humor like? If anybody want to want to give me an idea of when when we have Jewish mothers in a joke what are they, what are they doing go ahead mike uh i guess i can i can give an example of my of my favorite i don't know if it's a classic or not but um what is the difference between a jewish mother and a pit bull i can't think of anything pit bulls eventually let go <laughs> yeah okay it's the overbearing mother yeah see so jewish mothers protect their family with an amazing amount of of um stick to itiveness 
and yet they're always people they're, you know they're always um uh, their family doesn't exactly appreciate it let's put it that way uh they're they're very very uh tough but at the same time much maligned um my favorite jewish mother joke is probably um how many jewish mothers does it take to change a light bulb anybody the answer is zero i'll sit in the dark uh, so Jewish mothers manipulate. They don't exactly come right out and say what they want, except they're saying things like, why didn't you call me last week to their children? Oh, that's another great one. Um, a guy call, calls his mom and says, mom, how are you doing? She's not too well. What's the matter? I'm feeling very, very faint. I always have to sit down. I can't do anything. You know, mom, how long has that been going on? What's wrong? Uh, she said, it's been going on for 40 days. I didn't eat anything for 40 days. He said, you didn't eat anything for 40 days? Why not? She said, I didn't want my mouth to be full when you called. Um, so that's also a, a very typical uh, Jewish mother joke and maybe even a, a general immigrant mother joke. Um, I find it very interesting that Jewish mothers are tough. Jewish grandmothers are sweet in the, in the, the jokes. And Japs, if you've ever heard the term, which is the, the young uh, females before they come Jew become Jewish mothers, it stands for Jewish American princess. Um, the Japs are terrible, the Jap jokes. Uh, they're really an excuse uh, for anti-feminist humor. And they talk about how uh, the Jewish American princess is very self-centered and uh, can't do anything, doesn't work, wants to be supported. But in somehow, when I look at this and I go, these people turned into Jewish mothers. How did that happen? So I find, I find that interesting. Jewish waiters, anybody see Seinfeld, the, the, uh, um, the soup Nazi? Okay, if you're a fan of Seinfeld, believe it or not, the soup Nazi is closer to the classic Jewish waiter joke than anything else where they're sarcastic. They feel that they're better than the customer, even though they're waiting on the customer. Okay, so there's a lot of humor there. Um, and uh, pious fools, Hasidim, a lot of different sects of Jews making fun of each other. If you've got these characters in it, it's going to be a Jewish joke. They're, they're part, parts of the Jewish people. And of course, anti-Semites. We did talk about anti-Semites. Um, and uh, uh, sinners. Oh, chances are a lot of a lot of groups, especially groups of faith, have jokes about sinners. I I, I can't think of anything right now. If anybody, uh, if anybody can, let me know. What about a Jewish mother-in-law joke? Does did anyone ever hear of a Jewish mother-in-law joke? I know that mother-in-law jokes are very popular, right? Okay, then here's a classic. In a small town in uh, Eastern Europe, um, a, a young man, a young yeshiva boy, is coming into town because he has a bride waiting for him. And he comes to the, gets off the train, uh, gets onto the platform. What does he see? But a young woman and her mother, and on the other side, another young woman and her mother. And he's the only young man who got off the train. And they both start fighting over him. No, he's mine. No, he's mine. No, he's, I'm supposed to marry him. No, I'm supposed... And so finally they decide, what are they going to do? They go to a rabbi in a nearby town to adjudicate. And he asks the first group for their story. And he asks the second pair of women for their story. And he asks the fellow for his story. And he doesn't know more than the fact that he's coming to get married. And then the rabbi says, we can only solve this the same way that Solomon did. He said, I'm going to take this young man and I'm going to cut him in half and give one half to that set of women and the other half to that bride. And one of the, one of the uh, mothers says, um, I think that's a good idea. 
that's okay. Which if you know the story of Solomon and the baby, that was exactly the opposite of what you had. And what the rabbi says, he says, oh, that's the real mother-in-law. Uh, so yeah, that that's probably the only real mother-in-law, Jewish mother-in-law joke in existence. How is it Jewish? It makes reference to King Solomon and a story about how he solved the problem of two women arguing over a baby. Um, did I tell you the one about, maybe not. All right, we can, we can save that because we're going to be uh, going over many of these in, in more depth. All right. Here's a question. If we say that Jewish humor is a thing, that there really is such a thing as Jewish humor, and we go back here and we identify different characteristics, why? Why should that be? You know, Jews exist all over the world. They don't all eat the same food. They don't all uh, live in the same country or come from the same country. Uh, they have different cultures because Jews spread out all over the world and took on the general culture that they were living in. Um, what do Jews share? Uh, and also, what is this thing of Jewishness? Um, the Nazis considered uh, Jewish Jews to be a race. Um, some people consider Jewishness only a religion, a faith. It could be a culture, in which case, boy, like I said, there's Jewish different Jewish cultures all over the place. Um, could be a nationality, which the only thing it could be would be uh, Israel. And um, a cl clannishness. You know, the Jews consider themselves a family no matter where they come from. And so when people, um, um, especially bigots, say, oh, Jews are clannish, what do they mean? Well, for one thing, I don't see the I don't see why that's a problem. I think everybody should be clannish. It means if you're going to take care of the people of the world, make sure you don't ignore your own people. Um, so we could discuss this more in depth. And in fact, it would be nice for people who don't yet uh, have a term project maybe to work on some of this. Uh, what else can we say about it? Um, one thing is that what do Jews all over the world from all different cultures have in common? Well, they have a common history, in a, in a sense, an ancient history, not modern history. Um, and they have common books. The, the Jews are called the people of the book. And so if, there, if we find that there is humor in the ancient texts, in the Hebrew Bible, and in the Talmud, and there is a lot, chances are it's going to influence a Jewish sense of humor in more modern times. And it could serve as the commonality of um, for, for why uh, Jews all over the world should share something. And also it could be, a, and obviously there's gonna be a compare and contrast part um, because Jews all over the world are also not the same. And sometimes there's humor out of comparing those and seeing uh, what's different. I think I, to I told you the, the COVID joke about the um, Sephardic Jews who ate at their Ashkenazi friend's house. And uh, they went to the emergency room because I couldn't taste anything. I th they thought they had COVID. Um, so yeah, definitely different foods and different culture. Question? Okay, so we're gonna fill this out eventually. We may not come back to this table, but eventually I plan on filling that out. Question? Okay. I'm gonna stop recording.